<laughs> okay, and we're live. And we're live, okay. So we're just gonna wait for people to start coming in and then we'll get started in just a couple of minutes. And how's your day going, Raina? It's been good. Not too many emails today, so it was nice. Um, it was actually quite warm here for New Jersey. So it was a nice what break is- from like the 19 degree weather we've been having lately. <laughs> so what is warm for you guys like around this time? Um, Warm this time of the year would probably be in the 40s, which it is today. Well, I know it's different than what you're experiencing. (laughs) Yes. So um, in Hawaii, for us, specifically for my island, because the other islands, like the temperatures vary a little bit more. But for my island, on certain parts of the island, it gets down to like maybe the 50s. And that's pretty cold and I would say like high 50s like 55 um so (laughs) that is like really really cold but I'd say on majority of the island usually it's around um like low 70s to high 60s and that's like you see women in Ugg boots like it's cold (laughs) you see women in turtlenecks it's for (laughs) It's like crazy. yeah you would completely laugh if you saw it um but year round I want to say it's probably in the mid 70s to you know mid 80s so like the perfect weather essentially ah uh, you know everybody wants what they don't have I wish that I lived in a place that had four seasons it'd be nice to actually experience all four seasons in one year yeah. um, so but you know give and take a little here and there true I do like fall I mean winter is not great but fall with the leaves and like the crisp air I get that I yeah I would love to spend longer than a few days in like fall um since Hawaii we don't really have that it's pretty much like wet season or dry season And wet season only lasts maybe from, I want to say, like, December to February. Wow. Okay, so I think we're going to get started with our intro. Okay. Okay. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us. My name is Raina. I do the social media and customer service here at Zillabu. So if you've ever emailed us or DM'd us with a question or an issue, I'm usually the one who you've spoken to and tried to help as much as I can. Um, I'm so excited to be showing you all this new series we are starting. It is my pursuit to learn how to do nails. I am a complete newbie. Um, I get my nails done by one of our leaf gel educators. So I love nails, but I don't have that much education on them myself. So we are going to be learning together the basics um, of base gel, color gel, top gel, everything um, (laughs) that will help me learn the best I can to be able to do nails just like all of you. Um, I started Zillabu about a year ago. And in that time, I've just fallen in love with nails, nail art, all the products we have, which are beautiful. And I just have such an admiration for nail artists and what they're able to create. I think it's insane (laughs) on such a tiny little palette. So uh, I have Devin, Dev the Nail Junkie, here with me today. She is a leaf gel educator as well as a fiote educator for us. And I'm going to switch it over to Devin now, and you could tell us a bit about yourself and about being a Fiote educator. So um, I think Raina forgot to mention how I am addicted to Zillabu products. So (laughs) (laughs) Um, 
my name is Devin, aka Dev the Nail Junkie, and I am a leaf gel educator and Kyote educator. And today I'm basically here to help Rain out on her new nail be- <laughs> new <laughs> newbie nail lover journey. Um, I have about 10 years of experience in the nail industry and I I'm still learning. So um, I became a Fiote educator earlier this year. Oh, wait. Oh, no, we just started this year. Okay, so I became a Fiote educator last year. Um, Basically, I became an educator because I was looking for a gel polish brand to learn more about and work with more. Um, Currently, I primarily use like Japanese potted gels, which creates amazing freehand nail art. Um, You can do such a large variety of techniques. But something I noticed was that for certain art techniques, it required gels with a lot thinner viscosity. So I noticed that, you know, I can create a lot with my current set of gels, but I still needed other types to do even more art. And that's when I found out about Fiote and I tried their products, realized that they have amazing pigmentation, um, that they're non-toxic, you know, 10 free, all these wonderful things, gorgeous bottles, great viscosity. And on top of that, the wear time is about five weeks long. So I kept my raggedy nails. So that way I could show you guys this is week four. And even though it's a little bit blurry on camera, I can tell you that there is no lifting like at all. It's been great. So you know, it's perfect for someone like myself where I don't have a lot of time to do my own nails. So I need something that's like good to go for a long time. And Fiote has been the answer to that. And on top of that, they have like perfect compatibility with leaf gel. So what more could I ask for? <laughs> I can't believe your nails haven't lifted, honestly, <laughs> looking at yeah, how know, far crazy. out it is. Because even after like a couple of weeks, I'm just like, all right, I need new nails. Like I'm dying. But that that's really cool. So tell me more about what Fiote itself means, like the name and the company. So Fiote basically means um, it's comprised from two words, Fiore, which is the Italian word for flower, and Clarte, which is the French word for light. And then, sorry, I like blanked out just now. <laughs> Did you say tell you about the name and also the company or just yes. the name? <laughs> Any info um, you have about Fiote. Okay. No, maybe so, things that you really like about them, other than um, obviously the no lifting thing. So basically, um, part of the reason that I love give me one sec. I'm just gonna like adjust the camera slightly. That's fine. So basically what makes Fiote so special is that all of their key ingredients are imported directly from Germany. They are non-toxic, tan-free, and have the highest cosmetic grade. Um, Fiote even has a designated quality control department. So it ensures that you are always going to receive the absolute best product because they are spending the time to double check it and make sure that it's good to go. Um, also they are one of the few brands that gives full disclosure on the ingredients that they use. And then of course, like I said, the amazing wear time and the colors and all the other good stuff. (laughs) So then tell me about the process of you becoming an educator for them. What made you want to become an educator and like, what perks does that have for, you know? Um, basically the thing that made me want to become an educator was the fact that I was looking for more um, like gel polishes to work with because I didn't really use any at the time. So that was one of the big things. But another thing is that I decided to enter a competition that Zillaby was holding and um, I participated and I won. So I am here today talking to you guys. Some of the things that I think has been awesome about becoming an educator is that it helps further establish your credentials. It creates like a unique selling factor for why clients may want to choose you over maybe another salon. For example, if you're advertising that you use these like 
non-toxic, high quality, beautiful products that last a long time. You know, it gives clients something that they can like look forward to or trust in. Um, other great things about being an educator is that uh, you have more opportunities to earn a little bit of an additional income. Um, educators also receive discounts on some of your products. And sometimes if you're lucky, you even receive a little bit of free product as well. Nice. Wow. So that sounds like being an educator is kind of the best of both worlds. You get some freebies sometimes or, you know, some discounts, but then you also get to say to people, hey, I know what I'm talking about. I use these amazing products and I've trained with the company themselves. So it gives like a level of assurance for your clients. It really does. Also, I think, um, you know, when you start doing more projects and stuff, you're basically increasing your search engine optimization for those of you who know what that is. It's like, so that way when clients maybe research you or Google your name, you come up associated with also these like other amazing brands. And that's the goal, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, so let's talk about what we're gonna be doing today with these amazing Fiote products. So we're gonna be going over the base gels they have and yes. I'll let you take it away with what tools we need and I'll okay. show you the tool. So um, when you are doing your nails, these are some of the basic things that you're going to need. So you're going to need a paper towel or something to protect your workspace, which is what we have. Um, cotton pads or a lint-free wipe, but make sure it's not cotton balls. Again, you don't want to get little fuzzies everywhere. Um, and then for the Zillabu tools that you will need, you're going to need a buffer. I got my leaf gel buffer. <laughs> and you will need a nail lamp and you can use a nail foil of any color of your choosing. You're going to need Fiote's gel starter and also you will need Fiote's base gels. So you're gonna see them in our live demonstration. Awesome, okay. So what is the gel starter though? You mentioned the gel starter a little bit, but what makes it different than other gel liquids that we use? Um, so the gel starter is considered like a all-in-one cleanser. So you can use it for removing moisture in the nail bed to, before applying gel to reduce lifting. And then you can also use it to remove the inhibition layer after curing. You can use it to remove a gel set, which is crazy to me. Like if you're trying to do a soft soak off gel, it will take that off. Um, and also you can mix it with Fiote gel colors and create watercolor type art. So it just completely replaces like acetone and alcohol. alcohol. Yeah. And it wow. smells really, really good. <laughs> For those of you who are super sniffers, um, it smells really, really nice. And I forgot to mention, you can also clean your brushes with it. So if you're doing a lot of freehand art, it's perfect if you just like put it in a dappen dish and you can use that to like clean off your brush in between doing, you know, detailed anime art or whatever it is that you're working on. Nice. Okay, cool. So let's get started. Okay, so first you are going to need to grab your nail tip. Okay, I have my handy dandy give me tip. So now you are going to grab your buffer and you are going to want to buff the surface of the nail. Okay, so is it Short little motions or long sweeping motions? We can do long motions. So for example, let me just grab my file and you're gonna mimic me. So just do this. So side to side. Yep, side to side, you got it. All over the nail. So what you're going to look for is that you want to make sure the nail is completely matte. You don't want to see any shine. Um, 
the purpose of doing this step is to make sure you kind of remove the oils from the nail and also kind of rough up the surface so that the gel can better adhere to it. In a normal setting, you would like prep your nails and clean or clean, then prep, cuticle care, um, do all that other stuff, but we don't have to worry about that today. So, so is there a trick to kind of getting the little sides that are difficult to yes. get sometimes? <laughs> <laughs> so if you hold the file, like, hold on, I've never had to like explain it this way. So I'm like, thinking, <laughs> okay, if you hold the file like this, so your index here and your thumb here, okay. so like make an L shape and then go like this. Yes. And then you're going to use your middle finger to like kind of hold it in place. So like underneath. Yes, yes. Okay. And then it makes it easier for you to like, go like this when you're filing to really like curve. Okay, oh yeah, now I got that. So cool. then you could just like, or you can do like the long strokes on the side if it helps. Yeah. You're doing great, Reina. Yeah. I think you got it. I think okay. you got it. Cool. So this is my okay, so now added out tip. You are just going to use like a cotton pad with nothing on it to wipe away the dust. Traditionally, okay. we would put gel starter on it, but because we're working on a fake nail tip, we're not going to do that. Yep. Okay. So just, so just wipe that away. Perfect. The worst part of when you apply gel is when you get like little bumps and fuzzies or dust in it. It's yeah. not awful. <laughs> um, <laughs> So now we are going to get ready and grab our two gel bases. Can you show them on camera for us? Okay, so you have two options with Fiote's base gels. They are made from the same formula. However, they have different viscosities and a different brush length. So the OZ base gel has a thinner viscosity and has a longer brush. I believe it's 12 millimeters length. And then the addiction base gel has a thicker viscosity and it has a eight millimeter brush length, I believe, yeah. So which one should we pick? I think today for instructions, we're gonna go with my favorite and that's the addiction base gel. So you can so just wait. put the Ozeal away. Quick question, the what camera. is the difference or benefit between the different viscosities? Is there okay. a scenario I would use the thinner compared to the thick? Yes, there is. So for example, I think it just kind of depends on what your client needs um, or what you need and also what type of art you want to do. So for example, if I was doing the very, very popular Aurora Ice Nails, mm -hmm. where it requires like it to be kind of thicker and more bulky to create that Aurora ice effect, I would probably opt for something like the OZ base because it's very thin. So it's not going to add that additional um, thickness, especially because later on when I do the art, I'm going to have to add that thickness. So mm. it helps to just kind of make the nail look a little slimmer. Um, but I would use something like the addiction base. If I was going to apply it on a customer whose nails maybe needs more support. Maybe they have thinner, more fragile nails, or maybe my nails are kind of weak or something. So then I would wanna use the addiction base because it's got that added thickness. So that way it kind of gives more support to the nail. So when I work with clients who have, you know, maybe thin or damaged nails, I try to offer them support um, throughout the gel process. So for example, I would start with maybe a base gel that has maybe a thicker viscosity and then, you know, a few more times throughout the nail process, I would select items that have thicker viscosities to help support the strength and bleh. <laughs> Sorry, I like end up getting all tongue-tied. Um, so yeah, I basically just want to make sure that their nails are being supported, especially if they're long or weak or brittle. Um, I want to add that extra strength. So does so that affect the soak off at all? So does uh, it make it like a longer process if you use a thicker viscosity compared to a thinner? Or is it kind I'm of not the same? <clears throat> 
not so much. Uh, not okay. with the base shells. I feel like okay. it's not too much of a dramatic difference. Okay, cool. All right, so do I oh. go for it? <laughs> mm -hmm. You're gonna go for it. You can open the bottle. So this isn't like normal nail polish where you have to shake it or smack it against your hand or anything like that. Do not, do not do, shake nope, it. Nope, just open smack. it as it is. <laughs> yeah. So then you're gonna go ahead and you're just gonna kind of remove the excess off of the lid. So like this, or sorry, I feel like there's another way to say it. So usually the way that I do it is I can just take the bristles and kind of go back and forth like this. So what you're doing is you're getting the gel to create a small bead right at the tip of the brush. Okay. Got it? Yeah. Do you see a little bead now, like at the tip? Yes. yes. Okay. Very little. Let me try again. We get a good one. Now I'm doing it with you right now. <laughs> just like okay. Now I make sure. So now you're gonna go ahead and cap your free edge. So that's the very top edge of the nail. So you're just gonna take the brush and you're gonna like pull it along this edge. So like yep. around here? Okay. Go to the very, very tip of the nail actually. It's the edge. Oh. Okay. Yes. Like <laughs> so it's almost like you're outlining the edge, if okay. that makes sense. Like. See, I already make mistakes. It's okay. <laughs> I've made God awful mistakes that I'll share another time <laughs> when I first started doing nails. Um, okay, so I just so, start right here with the edge. Yeah, so actually it's gonna, you're gonna start from the side a little bit. Yes, from there. And then you're just gonna kind of run the brush over the edge, like an outline. So think of it like you have a tiny little detail brush and you're just painting the edge of it. Oh, okay. yes. And now you're going to do the other side. Perfect. Yes. So that's called capping the free edge. Um, we do that. So it helps reduce the chances of lifting. Then you're going to go from the very tip of the cuticle. So where the cuticle line would be. Yes, that side. And now you're just going to drag the gel brush from there in one stroke all the way down. So like this. So start here and then just go all the way down. Yes, perfect. Okay, yeah. and then just repeat it around this. Yes. Oh, okay. So just like how you would with regular nail polish. Yes. And then I think after that, you can do the other side. Okay. Yep, I think that should be good. Perfect. Does the whole nail look shiny and clear to you? Yes. Okay. It's ready for Wait, curing. A little bit on the side. <laughs> okay, <now we're> good. <laughs> so how long would I cure that for? So you're going to want to cure this for 30 seconds in a 36 watt lamp. Okay. It is now curing. So yeah, I definitely have to say one of my favorite bases is the addiction base because again five week wear time is like crazy, crazy. <laughs> it's so crazy and I think last week um on the Zillabue Instagram account there was an image of my nails posted from the day that I did it which was like December 16th or something or yeah I, I can't even remember and now it's um I believe the photo was like a before and after so then yeah. it was like three weeks later. And now this is the fourth week and we're still doing just fine. No lifting. It's not getting stuck in my hair. Um, it's you great. You see how long you can go, honestly. <laughs> just see it's wild. I know. <laughs> I'm kind of curious, right? I'm kind of <laughs> curious about that. Um, so in Hawaii, we have this phrase called shigo. And that means like, you know, it's still good. You can still use it. So yeah. the joke is that like with my old grown out set, it's she go like, you know, we're still good. <laughs> okay. And this is all done curing. Okay. So Basically. now 
that it's done curing, you're going to notice that there is a very sticky layer that is like, Mm -hmm. yep, you can just touch it real quick if you want (laughs) out of curiosity. (laughs) Um, So as you can see, it's very sticky. Uh, That is like the inhibition layer. So it's a small residue of gel that did not cure that sits on the top layer. And it kind of works as like adhesion for the next gel color or whatever you're about to apply on after this gel. But today for the purpose of the demonstration, I'm going to have you remove that with your gel cleanser and a cotton pad or lint free piece of paper, whatever you want to use. Whatever I got. (laughs) basically. Okay. So can't see, but I put gel starter on it on this and I'm just going to wipe it down. Just wipe it down. And when you remove it, you're going to notice it's not going to be as shiny, but it still kind of feels sticky, doesn't it? Yeah. A little bit. I think that's pretty much good. Yeah, that's it. That's all you have to do to remove the tacky layer. So now you're going to grab your nail foil and I'm going to show you guys a super cool trick about um, both of Piote's base gels. We call this like an adhesion test. So can I see the other side of that foil, Reina? Flip it over. Okay, good. (laughs) I couldn't tell which was the, the shiny side and which wasn't. So Now with the foil, you're going to just go ahead and put it on top of the nail. Just over the whole thing? Yep. Other side. Other side. Yes. The shiny side should stay up? Yes. The shiny side should stay up. Oh, that makes sense. That's what will show on the nail. (laughs) Yes. And then you're going to press it. Use your finger to like push it down. Yep. You can just kind of go like this. Yeah. Spread it on out. Oh, it's starting to wrap in some areas. Yeah. Now you can oh, just go ahead and remove the, fo- um, remove the foil. Okay. Ooh, we got So some. you can go ahead and just take your foil and keep going like this. So I have a little piece of foil. Yep. So you can just keep patting it on if you want. And And you'll notice it keeps transferring. Isn't that cool? I love that. So if you wanted to, you could just have a foil look on like your bare nails. Yeah. So this is perfect beginner art. If you just want to have something kind of fun and shiny, simple. Um, And that's pretty much it. So now I'm going to have you take your gel cleanser and your cotton pad and wipe away the foil. Oh, okay. Let's see. Do I need to re-wet it or do you think like it's still pretty wet? Probably if it still feels wet, then you'll be okay. But if it doesn't feel wet, you're probably going to need to apply more. I'll be safe. I'll just add a little more. Just a bit. Okay. All right. Now I just wipe again. Yep. Wipe it away. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. It's coming off. It's coming off. And now once it dries, once the nail is all dry and you've wiped it away, I think that should probably be good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me know when it feels dry, you can touch it. Probably needs another couple seconds. Okay. (laughs) So I'm gonna tell you something else about this base gel. So for Fiote's base gels, they have a patented formula on their base gels and actually all of their clear gels. And they created a very, very, very unique formulation that works so well with the natural nail. And they tried to even like mimic um, the flexibility of the natural nail. So basically what happens is that if the nail is really flexible, but the gel you put on top of it is not, it can cause um, like lifting or higher chances of lifting 
when you're doing like everyday activities because your nail underneath might be kind of moving and flexing, but if the gel doesn't flex with it, then you have a higher chance of the set not lasting as long. So Fiote made sure that their gel polishes flex with the natural nail, but at the same time are still very, very strong and durable. Nice. So if you have a gel that doesn't flex as much with your nail, like Fiote's do, is there also a risk that you might break a nail? Because maybe um, it'll be it fighting. Might chip. It. Yeah, it might chip or, um, depending on like how, uh, thickly or thinly it, uh, the gel is applied, there is a chance where you could break a nail easier. Um, so yeah, there's all kinds of like little things that could happen when the gel doesn't match the flexibility of your natural nail. So now that that's dried, yep, I'll go dry. ahead and take your foil again. Oh, okay. With the non-shiny side? Yep, the non-shiny side should be down. Okay. And we're gonna- and do it. Yep, just do it again. Just pat it this time or try to fit it on the whole nail? You can just pat it to, it. yeah, just go ahead and add it however you want to. Usually when I work with foils, I just kind of fill this, fill that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I see it. It's still going on there even after it was removed. Even after you removed it. Yeah. So it's perfect because, um, you know, for example, if maybe you didn't like the transfer or you didn't like the look the first time you did it, you can always just redo it again and still get amazing results. That's the cool thing about, you know, Fiote's base gel. And this is after we, we removed the inhibition layer. So it's so still, it's still very sticky. Nice. That is so cute. Yeah, you can do all kinds of very simple art with it. Um, especially if you like layer their clear or sorry, their syrup gels over it, you could do like changing colors or rainbow version of the transfer. So it could be a lot of fun. So there's a lot of options. <laughs> there's tons of options with this trick. I love that. So and that's pretty much it for today's live. So Tell me, Reina, how did you uh, like doing this little nail demo on camera? I honestly had a lot of fun. I now finally understand the difference between these two base gels, which is very helpful since <laughs> people ask me questions all the time. Um, and I like that, as you mentioned, they're flexible. So they'll move with the nail because I've had issues before where it's just lifted and I almost, you know, snapped my whole nail off because it was like lifting like crazy. So I'm definitely uh -huh. gonna try this when I do my next set. Um, I also love that the foil can just pop right on and it, it was super easy to apply, you know, with the brush built in. So I yes. love that as well. Do you um, think that this is something you feel like you'd be able to do on your own? I think yeah, I think so. <laughs> with my few skills, I think I could probably manage it. Um, and then it's also nice thinking forward um, that the color gels are also in the same kind of bottle type with a brush. So that'll definitely make it easier for someone like me who maybe isn't that great with brushes yet um, and you know painting from potted gels. So this is honestly a great option for someone who's you know first getting started with gels. And it's also great that they have different types of face gels so depending on what type of nail art you're going to do, you have a lot of options. So I really like that. Um, I think we have some questions from our YouTube comments section. Let's see. Let me just pull that up. Um, yeah, I mean, I think what's gonna be really exciting is the next video when we get to add some color to it and kind of see all the steps of going from the base gel to then the color gel and how they'll you know interact together. So I'm really excited for when we're gonna do that next. Um, I think we're gonna so, have a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> so we are all good on the questions. People are just saying hi. So hi hey, everyone. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. 
yeah thank you so much everyone for coming thank you so much Devin for taking the time to show me all these amazing products and how to use them which I desperately needed to learn so I really appreciate it you're and a great student Raina <laughs> thank you <laughs> and I can't wait for the future episodes where we dive into this even more okay well it was good seeing everyone I guess seeing everyone online <laughs> <laughs> and I will talk to you guys later. Thanks. Definitely. Thank you, Devin. And thank you everyone for coming. We'll see you next time.